I read just about every comment and the biggest complaint on rechargeable batteries is that they self-discharge. In other words, they lose power just sitting on the shelf waiting to be used. It's been right at 42 days since the previous test on rechargeable batteries and I'll be testing those batteries that have been sitting on the shelf for 42 days to see which one of the brands is the best. Also, thanks to Tony from Australia, I'll be testing two additional brands that he sent to me for testing. We're also gonna be checking in on some batteries that have been getting charged and discharged daily in these exterior solar powered lights to see how they're doing. So let's get the testing underway and see which one of these brands is the best. In the previous video, we tested four batteries of each brand, except for the PowerX batteries. We only tested two of those. All the batteries we tested seem to have had a fairly consistent capacity. So I'll only be testing one battery of each brand for the self discharge test. I still have two more sets of batteries resting in a safe place for testing self-discharge in the future. To make sure we provide a fair test, we previously measured the capacity of each battery using a 500 milliamp discharge rate. So we'll discharge all batteries this time using the 500 milliamp discharge rate and we'll be using the exact same battery bank as we used last time for each battery. The results are in and they are indeed very interesting. The Amazon Basic Silver previously showed a capacity of 2,381 milliamp hours but after 42 days of sitting on a shelf it's down to 2,113, a loss of 11.26%. The Amazon Basics Black had 1,849 last time, is down to 1,716 this time, which is only a loss of 7.19%. Very impressive. The Harbor Freight began at 2,257 and is down to 1,983, a loss of 12.14%. Finally, the Rayovac went from 1,362 to 1,189, a loss of 12.7%. Moving on to the next set of batteries, the IKEA Lattice started off at 2,418 is down to 2,208, a loss of only 8.68%, which is actually rather impressive for a high capacity battery. By the way, I previously mentioned that the Inloops had a 2,000 milliamp hour capacity in the previous video since I was going by the number on the front of the packaging without reading the fine print. Reading the fine print, they are only rated for 1,900. So the Inloops went from 1,891 to 1,754, a loss of only 7.2 4%, which is very close to the same as the Amazon Basics Black. The EBL started off at 2,459 and is down to 2,131, a loss of 13.34%. Wow, that's by far the worst we've tested yet. Finally, the Energizer started off at 1,898 and is down to 1,770, which is only a loss of 6.74%, beating both the Interloop and the Amazon Basics Black in a very close race. Moving on to our final set of batteries, the PowerX started off at 2,408 and dropped to 2,200, which is only an 8.64% loss, nearly tying the performance of the IKEA Lada. The Duracell started off at 2,449 and dropped to 2,208, a loss of 9.84%. So which battery is best? Well, that really depends on how you look at it. After 42 days, the battery with the most juice was a tie between the IKEA Lata and the Duracell with the PowerX very closely behind. So if you plan to drain out a battery in 42 days or less, this might be the angle you consider taking to assess which brand is best for you. Looking at it from another perspective, the Energizer, the Interloop, and the Amazon Basics Black averaged around a 0.16 to 0.17% self-discharge rate per day, which is far better than the EBL at nearly twice that rate with a 0.32% loss per day on average. Over a span of 42 days, this can really add up. As you can see, the Energizer, Amazon Basics Black, and Interloop only lost around 7% of their charge after 42 days, while the higher capacity batteries lost around 10% or even more. So if shelf life longevity is important beyond 42 days, this might be a deciding factor as you pick out which batteries are best. So a big thank you to Tony from Australia, thanks for sending the Varda and the Active Energy batteries. Using the exact same testing methodology we used in the original video on rechargeable batteries, I'll be testing two batteries at the 500 milliamp charge and discharge rate and one at 1000 and one at 300. The results are in and the results are very interesting. I have to say I'm really impressed with the Varda which is rated for 2600 milliamp hours and it produced 2528 and 2536 at the 500 milliamp charge and discharge rate and 2,505 at the 1,000 and 2,601 at 300. The Varda actually has the highest capacity of all the rechargeable batteries we've tested yet. Very impressive battery. We'll be testing the active energy battery next using the exact same methodology as the Varda. So how did they do? Rated for 2,100 milliamp hours, they only produced 1,480 and 1,495 at the 500 milliamp charge and discharge rate, 1,458 at the 1,000 rate, and 1,500 
557 at the 300 rate. That's only 70% of the advertised capacity, the worst rechargeable batteries we've tested yet. So the Vardas are amazing and the Active Energy disappointed. I've had a lot of comments on how rechargeable batteries will only work well for 10 to 20 cycles or sometimes more than that, but the bottom line is they just don't last as many cycles as advertised. So we're going to put each brand to the test using these outdoor solar lights that will charge during the day and discharge each night. I will place each light side by side and in full exposure to sunlight to ensure each battery experiences a charge and discharge cycle every day. During each update on the rechargeable batteries, I'll remove the batteries from these lights and run a test on them to see how they're doing. The original batteries for these lights are 1200 milliamp hour nickel metal hydride batteries. Viewers also mentioned that the number of charge and discharge cycles is a very important factor to consider. During the testing period, the coldest day was negative 2 degrees Fahrenheit and the warmest day was around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Once dark outside, the lights remained on until the batteries were fully drained. The batteries had 25 days outside to charge and discharge. To see if the batteries are still good as new, I'll be using the refresh feature on the charger which will charge the batteries, then will allow each battery to rest for an hour, then it will discharge the batteries, then it will rest for another hour, and then recharge them again. As many mentioned, the capacity of nickel metal hydride batteries will actually increase after being cycled a few times. Are they right? Absolutely. Not surprising that all the batteries did show improvement. The Amazon's basic silver increased slightly from 2,331. The Rayovax capacity increased from 1,105 to 1,217, which is still short of the 1,350 rating. The Harbor Freight continues to impress by increasing its capacity from 2,085 to 2,141, narrowly missing reaching its 2,200 rating. The Amazon Basics Black was up from 1,725 to 1,857. Moving on to our next set of batteries, the Energizer really jumped from 1,772 to 1,901, but still missed its 2,000 rating. The IKEA continues to impress, going from 2,374 to 2,406, just barely missing its 2,450 rating. The Interloop was up from 1,781 to 1,883, just barely missing its 1,900 rating. That's very impressive. The EBL showed a very small improvement from 2,406 to 2,407, which is nowhere near its 2,800 rating. Moving on to our final two batteries, the Duracell improved from 2,457 to 2,496, exceeding its 2,450 rating. Finally, the Pyrex went from 2,524 to 2,521. Going from first to worst, the Duracell continues to impress after 25 cycles, and so does the Interloop. If one considers 95% of capacity a good score, then all but two brands did well. Unfortunately, the Rayovac only achieved 90% and the EBL 86%. In the previous video, there were a lot of comments mentioning that rechargeable AA batteries were just too big for some electronic devices. So I measured several AA alkaline batteries and they all had a diameter of 14 millimeters or less. However, I measured all the rechargeable batteries and all of them were over 14 millimeters in diameter. The rechargeable batteries with a lower milliamp hour rating typically had a smaller diameter than those that had a larger milliamp hour rating. The reason I quit using rechargeable batteries about eight years ago is because of the self-discharge issue. Technology has come a long ways with these rechargeable batteries since then, as demonstrated by the Eneloop, the Energizer, as well as the Amazon Basics Black, all demonstrating well under a 10% self-discharge in 42 days, which is rather impressive. All the batteries, for the most part, would outperform the alkaline battery at the 42-day mark regarding overall capacity, just demonstrating how much better these batteries are nowadays than they were back 8 to 10 years ago. They've improved a lot, and I'm definitely going to begin using rechargeable batteries again. Regarding the exterior light test with 25 charge cycles, I was really impressed with all the brands on their performance. But now is when it's going to get very interesting over the next few months to see how they perform when they've accumulated a total of around 100 to 200 charge discharge cycles to see if they're still holding up. So if you're interested in me putting together yet another video on the rechargeable batteries for self-discharge as well as the number of charge and discharge cycles they can handle, please let me know and I'll put together a video on it. All my video ideas come from viewers, so if you have any future video ideas, please leave a comment. Let me know what you want me to put together. Also, just want to say thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care, and I look forward to next time.